Kathy and I met in Crete in the Mediterranean when we were both in the Navy. Any woman who's brave enough to say, yeah, I want to join the Navy, I swear to protect my country, is a, is a brave woman. Okay, so that's where the brave starts. She's brave enough to attack her education. Got her uh, associate's degree, got her bachelor's degree, got her master's degree, all while working full time. Um, that takes some tenacity and some bravery right there. Um, brave enough to hit the books at 10 or 11 o'clock at night and get up in the morning at four and start studying again. You know, you gotta be brave to push yourself. Um, she does that every day, always has. You know, it's one of the things I admire about her. So last year in February, I started having some mild shortness of breath. Not really anything major, just mild shortness of breath. Like when I was running up a flight of stairs, I was a little winded. On March 14th, I was trying to go to bed and I lay down in bed and my lungs were filling up with fluid. I could hear the fluid crackling in my lungs when I was breathing. And so I had my husband take me to the emergency room. In the emergency room, it was kind of surreal. Um, and even here at home, before we ever got to the hospital, it was surreal. It was like, you know, it's not really happening. This is a dream. There was a flurry of activity around me, of course. Uh, cardiology was called in. All kinds of tests were being done, chest x-ray being done, an EKG was done. You know, there was a lot of comings and going. Um, um, we were apart for the, the first 30, 40 minutes that she was in the hospital um, until they, you know, would let me see her or be with her. Over that time, I was feeling a lot better, and Dr. Houlihan, my cardiologist, came in and told me my results of my chest x-ray. So then he was telling me the results of my echocardiogram, which showed that I had severe congestive heart failure and my heart was um, functioning at about a third of its capacity. All I could think about was, you know, I love my life, I love my family, and that might be taken away early. You start, your mind starts saying the what ifs. What am I gonna do? What's gonna happen if, you know, what if she does pass away? What if, what if she dies on me? And the next day, we went ahead and we did the angiogram. And I was kind of hoping that that would show some blockage because maybe they could open it up and that would solve the problem and I'd be okay. And it didn't turn out that way. They don't know why it happened to me. There's never been any reason um, that we can pinpoint. I have what's called idiopathic heart failure, meaning that there's no known cause. Knowing about something is, is the first step in, in uh, understanding helping other people, you know, go in the direction that you need to go for a cure. Because of the damage to my heart, I have a high risk of having a heart rate that could cause me to die. And so my defibrillator could help me if, that, if I have a certain heart rate that's shockable. So it could actually save my life. Statistically, I have about five years to live. So possibly as many as 10, so five to 10 years. I get my strength from my family. They've been my rock, my husband's my rock. He's always there for me. And um, I also have a strong belief in God and I believe that um, the next life is only gonna be even better. If you have any small symptom or any slight idea that you are having an issue with your body, don't wait to go see what's wrong. Don't wait to go to the doctor. Go Red for Women is really important for me because I want to get the word out that this can happen to anybody. If you're having any kind of symptoms, shortness of breath, chest pain, pressure, anything, get in to see your doctor. Don't wait. I waited because it wasn't bad. I didn't think it was anything other than I was getting old and kind of out of shape. Um, but don't wait. And American Heart Association Go Red for Women event, it's so important because it helps our whole community and raises awareness in our community. So uh, my big vacation goal for this is to go to Colorado. So since this illness happened, I've been afraid to go to the higher altitudes because it's going to be hard on my heart. But I'm feeling really good. And so next year, we're planning a vacation to go see our son in Colorado Springs. Oh yeah, she's my hero. Yeah. Every day, she consoles me. She helps me with, uh, you know, everyday stuff. Don't take your girl for granted. 
ever. She might be gone tomorrow.